Long hair preachers come out every night Try to tell you what's wrong and what's right But when asked about something to eat They will answer with voices so sweet You will eat by and by In that glorious land above the sky We are high, work and pray Hello again, everyone. Today we're doing the lesson on the preacher and the slave, and I'm doing Harry McClintock's version. It's one of my favorites. And I'm gonna be demonstrating it on my new mountain banjo build. Made a red oak, Peruvian walnut, and it's got some maple dots inlays as well as the flush frets. This one's pretty neat because the headstock is supposed to represent that of a hammerhead skate deck. And I'm talking about the old fashioned fish boards back when they used to be really big. Like Tony Hawk's back in Tony Hawk's days. But the walnut is the walnut up on the headstock is supposed to look like striped grip tape. Because back in those days grip tape could be and still today, but especially in those days, grip tape could be put on however way you want. Sometimes you'd go to the store and it would just be bought like that, you know? And instead of friction pegs, I went with standard tuners because the nice thing about it is the silver tuners kind of represent the trucks. And down here, the knobs represent the wheels. Here's your nose on the front and here's the tail by the nut. Maybe a little goofy, but hey, I've never seen it done, so why not? And those stripes go all the way through into the body. And I tried to make that tailpiece, you know, match the rest of it too. And last thing I'll talk about real quick, with the banjo anyway, is I decided to give it a little neck angle. I don't know if you could see it that well, but yeah, right there. Thought I'd fiddle around with that since I'm always doing no angle on these mountain banjos and works pretty damn good. But uh, that's enough of that. Let's move on to the lesson. Alright, so our strings go as follows. C, G, C, E, G C G C E G And the chords we're going to use are well the regular relative G and then your C chord then your D7 and then the for this song, I use a chord that I can't really think of right now as far as what it is, but it's basically, if you know how to do the C chord, all you do is you move your middle finger down a string, same fret. So instead of a G, or I'm sorry, a relative C, move that down. For those of you who don't know which chords I'm talking about, I'm sure all of you or most of you do, Somewhere on the screen, I'll put a little icon of the chord shapes and such. So again, open G, C, D7, and then that funny chord. So I'll run through the start of it real quick and then we'll break it down.
So to get started, we're gonna hit that middle string, hit it again, fret it on the second, then hit that open second string, then go back to the middle string, then fret it again on that same fret, then hit it again open, then fret your bass string on the fourth fret, then hit that middle string again open, then go back to the bass, then back to the middle. Sorry. But we'll add a little pinch to that to make it sound more legit. And uh, if anyone's curious, I'm pinching both the bottom and the top strings when I do the pinch. So then, the next part is pretty similar. Long hair preachers come out every night Try to tell you what's wrong and what's right So basically once you get past the intro You're gonna hit that middle string again Fret it on that same second fret Hit that second string, go back to the open middle, then we're gonna get into that funny chord again. You know, that chord that's similar to, uh, almost similar to a C, but you go down here. So it'll sound like this. And just to run through, through that one more time, open middle, fret it, open second, open middle, hit that middle string again, but on that funny chord. And I'm just using my end pointer finger to rake the strings. Then I'll hit that middle string again, but all open. Fret the bass on the second string, then hit it again, open. Then hit the middle string open two times. And you'll hit it once more open, the middle string. Then you'll fret it on that second fret. Opens second string. So how we get to that point? Well, it goes something like this. Once you get past here. You're gonna hit that middle string open, then hit it again on the second fret. Then open second string. To make this easy, I know I'm going all over the place, but we're just gonna do that part upstroke style. So after you hit that second string, you're gonna brush, then hit it again. Then hit that bottom string, brush, second string, brush. Then you'll get into your D7. 
And from here, we're going to go away from the brushing for just a minute. And you're going to hit that middle string, second fret. Then you'll go back to the beginning. It's one of those songs that kind of repeats itself. Then you'll, but you'll hit that middle string open. Then you'll fret it. Hit that open second. Then back to the middle. Then you'll hit it again in that funky chord. Then you'll hit it again open. Then fret that bass string on the other the same fret then hit it again open then you'll hit that middle strings two times then you'll hit it again open fret it hit that second string back to the middle hit it again in D7 Hit it again, open, then into the bass string on the 4th fret. Then back to the open middle. Then open bass. Then back to the middle. So let's run through that one more time. Actually, I forgot. We're doing the brushing this time. <laughs> And then here's the last part of the song, because after you get past this point, the rest of the song is exactly what we've been covering so far. Nothing fancy, just enjoyable, easy-going stuff, you know. But the next part is, uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you real quick. And then after that, it's just back, like I said, you're repeating it. But let's go over that last part real quick. So that y'all can get started and have a little bit of fun in this new year with the new song. So what I'm doing to, for the last part is I am hitting this bottom string and then going to the second string and then back to the first string. But then after that, I'm just doing a series of upstroking and strumming. Or do they mean the same thing? Who knows? <laughs> Basically, I'm Then I'm fretting that second string on the first fret. Then hitting it again open. Then get on my D7. And hit that middle string. Then hit it again. Open string. Second string, by the way. Then get into your C chord. Hit that second string again. Then hit it again, open. Then hit that middle string on the second fret. 
hit it again open, and then hit that open second string. Sorry, this is confusing stuff, but let's go through that one more time. Then you go back to the first and second strings, you know, back and forth. And just like before, we'll do our upstroking in the midst of it. Then you'll fret that middle on the third fret, middle string. Then hit that second string open. Then get into your C chord and hit that bass string. You're basically going all the way down each string from the bass in that chord. Bass, middle, second. And then you'll hit that open middle string, fret the bass. Hit it again, open. Hit the middle string open. Hit the second open. Then D7 that middle string. Hit it again, open. Fret the bass on the fourth, and then go back to your open middle. Then back to open bass, and then your third. And from there on, you can continue the whole song. Let's run through that one more time. We'll do a whole demo here in just a sec, but hopefully you're with me so far. So that's the basic rundown of The Preacher and the Slave. And I was just showing you a bunch of easy ways to go about it. But uh, I like to do more than just pinches, I like to do rolls. And the uh, most common roll I like to do is the bum diddy and uh, it can be anywhere from the middle string bottom top or sometimes it'll be the second string and then the bottom and the top But I like to use them all, because why not? It's a lot more interesting than just doing the same old stuff. I mean, you can claw hammer this song too. It's just not as unique to me as doing different uh, finger picking patterns. But I'll show you real quick before the whole demo. It's not that hard, but if you want to be a little more uh, fancy with it, or have a little more fun with it anyway, I would just finger pick it. Two finger picking it, really. 
I mean, if you're a bluegrass picker, you can do it too. I just couldn't tell you how to do it, really, because I like the two-finger myself. But here's the full demo. Long hair preachers come out every night Try to tell you what's wrong and what's right Oh, and ask about something to eat They will answer with voices so sweet You eat by and by When you learn how to cook and to fry and bake a pie Chop some wood, it'll do you good And you'll eat in the sweet by and by all the rollers and jumpers come out And they sing and they clap and they shout Give your money to Jesus, they say He will cure all diseases today You will eat by and by In that glorious land above the sky way up high Work and pray it that's all there is to that song just like uh, songs such as uh, keep my skillet good and greasy you're just repeating the finger patterns and on such the whole entire song or the big rock candy mountain you know this is the same tuning I do big rock candy mountain you know <laughs> but before we close out I'm just gonna do one more close-up of this banjo Give you guys a better idea of what you're looking at here. Pretty fun build, I'd say. I really love the skateboard design on the headstock and how the tuners kind of almost represent the trucks and the wheels. And then those maple, there's those maple dot inlays and fresh frets, flush frets. And just like the last couple mountain banjos, these are glued and pegged together. These three boards here, they're glued, pegged together with these walnut dowels. The skin is held on with this walnut ring. Only this time I decided to make it extra hard on myself, just glue some walnut between the red oak here mostly for the purpose so that it looks like striped grip tape like I said it's supposed to look like those old hammerhead fish skateboards back before they were called cruisers nowadays everybody looks at these kind of boards and think oh you like a cruiser well for those of you who don't know these used to be this these skateboards to do just about anything on ollie kickflip Mostly, I'd see these used on um, skateboards, that is, on big-ass ramps and such. 
And uh, when guys like Rodney Mullen came around, then the board started becoming a little smaller and more practical for flip tricks. But in those times, back in those days, before the popsicle skateboards, this is the best you could get. They're heavy, but they work. And that uh, walnut slash grip tape runs all the way through the neck and into the body. And I really like how the tailpiece kind of matches the rest. The lighting's not the best, but you can see it. There's the stripes, and then it kind of lines up with the tailpiece. Boy, it definitely shoves some spots I gotta hit up with some steel wool still, but no big deal. Oh yeah, this was a little fun accident, or a fun mistake, or whatever Bob Ross used to say. <laughs> As I'm sculpting this, the walnut coincidentally kind of angles down with the oak, and to me it looks like the bottom end of a pool cue stick. I don't know if y'all could see that. And it's the same on this side too. Obviously, you'd have to use your imagination and look pretty good to see it, but I play a lot of pool, so when I see that, I think of a pool cue stick anyway. And as mentioned before, it's the first mountain banjo I've ever built that has a two degree neck angle, I think, which is plenty neck angle. Still experimenting with it, but it fully plays. There's a handcrafted bridge. I've just been making them a lot lately. But that's the new banjo and that's the lesson on the preacher and the slave. If you got any ideas, please jot them down in the comments, if you will. Whether you want a banjo, or a song, a song lesson, or if you just want to see something different. I'm an open mind. Probably one of the most open people you'll ever meet, or not meet. <laughs> but I'll show you real quick how good these frets are down here. I don't know how good you can see, but... I'd say I think it's mostly due to the neck angle that it's as accurate as it is even the flat necks or the zero degree neck angles are pretty damn close but I don't think I've ever gotten it as close as this like usually when there's no neck angle it's still dead on just right behind the fret but on this one I notice right on top of the fret, like in the smack center of it, it's just perfect. I couldn't be happier with it. <laughs> but that's all I got for now. I wish I could film outside. I really love filming by the river or outside, but it is uh, 14 degrees right now. And it's been a below 20 all day long in Washington, and we're not even getting the worst of this polar vortex that's happening right now. I know a lot of the country's dealing with some snow, and um, especially a lot of people that don't have homes are struggling right now. 
and I wish you the best, and I hope people, or at least people of the church, are allowing you guys to have a place to stay during these times, because, oof, I couldn't imagine being on the streets this time of year. If there's ever a time to feel bad for the homeless, more than any other time of the year, it would be right now, in the winter. But, with that said, I'm going to bid you all farewell, and have a good one. Peace.